Here's a raw kick drum track. I'm going to show you how I would EQ this kick drum using the same frequencies I always reach for. There are four different areas you want to boost and then two that you almost always cut. And for a modern rock or pop or metal kick drum, you're gonna do a lot of cutting. And on most tracks in the mix, I usually boost first before I cut with EQ, but it's the opposite on kick drum because when you cut out these frequencies, it instantly makes it sound more like a real record. There's two frequency areas to look at cutting. Sometimes you need to do both. Sometimes it's one or the other. Let's start with magic frequency one, 250 Hertz. So you can hear all that woofiness. So sometimes you need to go up to 300, sometimes it's more around 200. I think around 250 is a good spot on this kick. All right, that's already sounding better. Now with some kick drums, the area you need to cut is a little further up around 900 Hertz, and that's magic frequency number two. And some kick drums like this one need both of them, but that 900 Hertz area, that's if your kick drum sounds kind of like a basketball sound. That's the best way I can describe it, like a basketball, kind of honky, kind of nasally. So let's check this out. I'm gonna load it up on a separate EQ because I need those SSL bands for my boosts. There's that nasally honky mid-range. Now sometimes you need to cut in both of these areas like I did on this kick drum. Sometimes you only need to cut the lower or the higher range. Just do what sounds best, but make sure you're not too shy because on some kicks you need to take out a ton of these frequencies. All right, with those two cuts, it's starting to sound a lot more like a kick you would hear on a record. And now it's time to make it sound exciting. So there are four different areas you wanna look at boosting. First is at 8K, and I usually am just using a shelf, not a bell. This is that top end smack, the bright clickiness. Uh, that's, that's more of the 8K. I'll show you some other boosts that are more kind of smacky or slappy, but the 8K is that, that top end click. All right, that's sounding good. Now the next frequency you wanna boost, this is more of an either or. You're either gonna boost around 4.5K or around 2.5K, and I'll show you the difference here. So let's start with 4.5. So it's kind of bright like the 8K boost, but it's a little more slappy or smacky and not as pointy and clicky as the 8K. So sometimes that just helps it cut through the mix a little more in a mid-rangey way. That's typically the kind of sound I'm going for in my mixes, but occasionally I want something that's more plasticky and more kind of hard hitting in the mid-range. So in that case, I would look at 2.5K instead. I'll emphasize it there. You hear how that's more of an aggressive, like hard hitting sound? 2.5K, but if we go to 4.5, a little more bright and pointy. So this is more of a preference thing. Sometimes if I want the drums just to sound, I don't know, harder, maybe more of like a hardcore kind of vibe, more of a raw vibe, I'll go for the 2.5K boost. Otherwise, I'm typically going for the brighter kick sound with the 4.5K. By the way, I've got a completely different set of drum tracks loaded up here. And after I finish EQing the first kick drum, I'll do the same thing on this one, just to show you why I call these the magic kick frequencies. All right, back to the first one. I've shown you two areas to cut, three spots to boost. There is one magic frequency left, and that's for the low end, which we haven't really touched yet. And for me, it's gonna be 60 Hertz. With this boost, I'm usually using a bell. This is just for that, that thump, that kind of 
push that hits you in the chest. And you can sweep that around if you want. Sometimes a little lower, around 50 sounds good. And that's gonna be even more thumpy and less defined. Or you can go up a little bit, maybe 70, 80 hertz. Sometimes that sounds a little tighter on kick drums, but honestly, 90% of the time, I like how a 60 hertz boost sounds on the kick. All right, let's just dial this in a little more. All right, sounding good, just a little loud in the mix. Now that I've finished dialing in that kick drum, let's go to the other set of multi-tracks and I'll show you how I would approach it the exact same way. And I created a mixing cheat sheet that has all these frequencies listed out, so don't worry about writing them down or forgetting them or anything like that. Just go to mixcheatsheet.com, grab that cheat sheet. It's got the go-to starting points for EQ and compression for kick drum, snare, all the rest of the drums and all the other tracks in your mix as well. So go ahead and grab that. All right, let's hear this other kick drum now. So this is a different drummer, different drum kit, different studio. There's about 10 years in between these two recordings, but I'm gonna show you how I, I would still approach this the same way. So starting with the cut. It does sound very woofy to me, so we'll start there. All right, now let's dial in the top end. All right, sounded pretty tight. Now I might wanna make one more cut higher up in the mid range. Let's look around 900 again. Here's that basketball sound. Don't need to cut too much. All right, let's dial in some low end. Gotta throw on my headphones since I can't really hear subs on my NS10s. You know what, the, the raw kick track actually had a pretty nice sub low end push there, so we don't need a whole lot of 60. And even if you're not mixing really heavy stuff, you can still start with these frequencies. Really the only difference uh, between this and a more mellow pop or rock track, you just wouldn't make as extreme moves. So maybe you'd be more like. Probably still cut a lot. You just wouldn't have as much of that top end pointed attack. And then of course, for the more extreme heavy metal tracks, you need to get extreme with your EQ moves. All right, so to recap, the four areas you wanna look at boosting on your kick drum, 8K, and then either 4.5 or 2.5K, depending on the vibe you're going for, and then in the low end, 60 hertz. And then you need to look at cutting probably a whole bunch of around 250 hertz for the low end mud and woofiness, or if it's more of a nasally kind of boxy basketball sound, that's up around 900. All right, those are your six magic kick drum frequencies. You can remember them easily by just grabbing my free mixing cheat sheet. The link is in the description below. And once you've got your kick sounding this good, your snare needs to stack up as well. So I've got a video on that. It's called the four magic frequencies for EQing the snare. So go ahead, check out that video here and make your snare sound amazing.